All right, so I have managed to get myself in the back. So you want to buy a 2024 and up Mustang and you want to make sure that there's enough room in the backseat for your family and the kids. Well, this video is going to cover exactly that. Hey guys, welcome to Red 5 -0. Thank you for tuning in to another video. If you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. All right, so we've got a 2024 Mustang right here. This is the 2024 Mustang EcoBoost, not the GT. But the backseat room is going to be same for all the Mustang. The only difference here is that this one is a convertible as opposed to a fastback. So you may get a little bit more headroom, but we're going to test it out compared to a fastback because there's a sloping roof line. So it's going to be hard to get proper headroom there. I have done similar videos on the S550 Mustang fastbacks and convertibles. If you're on the fence, whether to get the S550 or the S650, you can check those out too. Honestly, my guess is that it's going to be pretty similar because the S650 Mustang is a revised S550 Mustang, really. So I don't imagine too much changing there. But I'd be curious to see if this one offers a little bit more headroom than the S550 Mustangs. Now, for this test, I just want to highlight that I am about 5'10". So we're going to do the test basically making the front seat forward enough where I can sit comfortably. So I'm going to try to sit behind myself to see if it's comfortable. I don't want to push the seat all the way in the front and then show you guys what the back seat room looks like from the back. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the front seat so I can sit comfortably. Because right now it's pretty much all the way in the back. Um, it's pretty tight here. So we're gonna go ahead and move it. This one does not have automatic adjustment over here. So I'm gonna manually drag it. Okay, so I've dragged it a little bit to the front. Uh, I can probably fix the recliner a little bit. We have some leg room right now, but not enough. So let's. So this one is really comfortable right now. So I'm gonna move it a little bit front. Like I have a lot of leg room. So I'm gonna move it a little bit front. So it's, so it is how I would typically sit if I was sitting in the passenger seat. All right, so I've got it to be a pretty comfortable spot. My legs aren't really touching. There's a good bit of room here and I'm pretty comfortable in terms of recline position too. So now I'm gonna to try to sit behind myself. All right, so I have managed to get myself in the back and this front seating position is basically how it would be if I was sitting in front of myself. So getting in is very difficult. If you've got kids, that's fine. If you've got children, maybe like 12, 13 or so, I think they'll be fine. But any grown adult just getting into the back seat is gonna be a problem. As far as the room, I've got a good bit of headroom here. Like I can, I can try to sit upright and I'm barely touching it. I'm pretty sure if this was a fastback, I would be hitting my head and I would need to kind of duck, which is obviously not comfortable for a long time. Now in terms of the leg room, it's okay. Like I'm hitting against the back of the seat right now. And it's not the most comfortable. I feel like if I was here for maybe a short trip, I would be comfortable with it. But if I really wanted to be here for a longer trip, I would not be comfortable riding in it. Now, of course, if the top was down, things are different because then at least you can relax a little bit back. You've got a lot of headroom, but in this case, the legroom is not going to be solved. You're still going to be hitting against the back of the seat. Again, not the most comfortable position for an adult. Now, if you've got kids, they will be fine completely in terms of sitting back here, unless they're, of course, tall. But if, you're, if they're like five feet or so, they'll be comfortable. They, they'll have enough leg room here. So, yeah, for, so if you've got kids that are high school going or something like that, it's not going to work. Um, you could make it work, but I think I would suggest getting, you know, having a daily driver that you can carry the kids around. Now for road trips or something like that, I think it's okay for kids who are like 13 or below or, you know, depending on the height, obviously. Um, but for long trips, I don't think I would be comfortable with it. And as far as the amenities too, I mean, you've got speakers right here that you can see there's nothing in terms of like any cup holders or any, any you know, fancy trim or anything. No USB ports here, no charging capability. So it's pretty basic in terms of the backseat amenities, which Ford expecting like they're not really putting any adults in the back seat, so they didn't really give that much a thought. I know with the BMWs and stuff, they'll get you your USB ports, you've got like a nice cup holder, so they give some thought to it. But I think Ford just knows it's not gonna get used, so might as well save some money, cut the cost down a little bit. Well guys, so that's all I've got on how the backseat room is on the 2024 and up S650 Mustangs. I think it's okay, nothing to write home about. Uh, if you're gonna be, if you're carrying, if you're gonna be carrying adults, then this one is definitely not for you. But for kids, I think it's fine. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to smash that like button. Comment below. What do you think about the new 2024 S650 Mustang? And of course, subscribe to Red 5.0 for more videos.